Go for it. Go for it. Sure. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the Cider Baby Show, and welcome to Mike from Devil Driver. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing? I'm I'm okay. You're looking well and relaxed and chilled. Is this normal yeah. for you on a Saturday night? Yeah, I've today. I'm staying home. I've been May has been the month of concerts for me. I've gone to see the Descendants um sick new world day after sick new world i went to go see sisters of mercy in las vegas uh last night i went to go see lacuna coil and the birthday massacre yeah monday i'm gonna go see a couple of uh, my friends bands thrown into exile and uh abysmal dawn and then possibly seeing the cure next week as well and after the cure i'm done because i i I'm not really the type to go out. I'm a little bit more on the reclusive side these days. Really? I mean, that's that's a good handful of gigs you got there coming along. Yeah, it's it's too much. But no, it's never too much. It, it, there is for me. There is. <laughs> okay, uh, we're supposed to be talking about your latest album, Dealing with Demons, Volume Two. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's out. Just, it is. Uh, we're what a week late, I suppose. We're twelfth of May, I think, it came out. Yeah, it came out, let's see, what is today is the 20th, so yeah, about eight days ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a while since Volume 1. I mean, I know we've had the dreaded COVID in between, but uh, it, was there a real reason between the delay of like 2020 and Volume 1 and 2023 of Volume 2? It was... Yeah, you know, due to COVID and a couple other things. Originally, we were going to release these albums at the same time, mm. maybe three to six months apart, maybe even a year apart. We hadn't decided, mm. and uh, COVID came around before. Um, I think we might have had a tentative release date. Actually, now that I think about it, and then COVID came around and we, everything got put on hold, and so. The pandemic started to come to an end, tours started to happen again, and Des got COVID real mm. bad. I got it too, but not nearly as bad as, as he did, and I didn't have any kind of long-term effects from it, thank God. Mm. Uh, but it took him a very long time to recover. I think he, he, he had it and was generally you know sick with COVID and testing positive, I think, for like 19 days, wow. something like that. Mm. And then it took him many, many months to recover after that. So we just had to wait and mm -hmm. before he can actually get up on stage and sing again. And the idea behind the, the timeline of the release of the records was release one during the pandemic when we, no one could do anything anyway, and then wait until we'd start touring again and get the band up and running before mm -hmm. we uh, release the second one so we can actually, you know, do some touring to support it. And that's pretty much it. That's what happened. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I've listened. I've, I've refreshed my memory of Volume One earlier today, and I've listened to Volume Two as well. They're quite different. I mean, the second one is quite brutal and in your face. Really, is that a, was that a conscious decision? No, it's it, it surprises me when people say that because everything was recorded at the same time. I don't remember the first track listing I saw was from Neil mm. and I believe it stayed about 70, 80% the same. And uh, we did switch things around a little bit, but I don't remember anyone saying like, we need to make the set, you know, put more of the heavier songs on volume two. That's not how it happened. Right. I think there's, I, I think the reason that, volume one seems a little bit more on the mellow side is because it features w wishing you mm. know for one thing which is probably the most mellow song we've ever recorded I've got to say so that, yeah. that's in there somewhere and then we have songs like mantra and bloodbath on mm. the second version so i think just having a it, having those songs arranged like that um Next time I go and listen to both of the records back to back, I'm going to kind of keep this in mind <laughs> and see if I think everyone is right or everybody's wrong. <laughs> oh, I could be wrong. But um, I mean, I, to tell you the truth, I'm glad that it uh, people are perceiving it that way because I'd rather have it kind of 
progress into a heavier direction as we're releasing it rather than mm. the other way around. Mm. I mean, I, I, I was listening, listening to the tracks. Um, nothing lasts forever in summoning. I got a real progressive vibe from the actual guitar riffs and whatever. Would that, was that would that be right or is that uh, intentional? Yeah, or? the ver- the verses change. In that song, the first verse is completely different than the second one. Mm. Um, it's actually one of the very first songs that we worked at, um, me, Austin, and Neil, when we started working on this record. And I do remember when we were in pre-production with our producer, Steve Evitz, he didn't, at first, he felt that the second verse being different than the first one was a little bit odd. Mm. And I knew that the first, but I knew the first one wasn't going to work with uh, in place of the second one for some reason. I think there's some key changes going on there. I can't remember why. Are they just the chorus just did not flow back into the verse riff par- properly? Mm-hmm. I had tried it in when we were recording stuff in my studio doing the demos. I remember, and I, I kind of knew that Steve was going to suggest that when we were in pre production, and sure enough, he did. And as a band, we tried to play it, and I didn't. I don't even think I had to say anything. We just, I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot again. Maybe it'll in a live scenario. We kind of sped the song up, and we're like, well, maybe it will work. And as soon as we played it, Steve was, nope, you're right. Keep it the same way. <laughs> um, it, you know, having verses differ from one another is actually something that I've been really been focusing on a lot in the on yeah. the last few records. So I, you know, I'm not trying to be frog in any shape or form. I'm just trying to mix, mix things up. Yeah. So I I do get some people like saying, like using that term progressive, which is fine, but Mm. I just see it as mixing things up. So to keep the, give the listener something new. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can put this. You are devil driver. Uh, probably my personal favorite of your particular genre but i mean i hate putting genres to bands because it, it seems to define them and they seem to only go in one particular way but i mean apple itunes they put you down as black metal doom metal but but you're not you, you're something quite a bit more than that aren't you yeah i you know that's hard from my perspective that's a hard thing to put my finger on you know for for many years i mean i didn't even know what groove metal was i had never heard that term before and there's all so many of these uh metal song subgenres that i've you know i've been hearing that i don't not even 100 percent exactly what they are <laughs> but people had always asked me what kind of metal band we were that hadn't heard us before and i would always just say straightforward metal yeah you know, I, I never had a better answer than that you know we don't rely heavily on electronics so we're not in that direction um we're definitely not i I don't mean to really see us as a death metal band i don't see us as definitely not a black metal band um i wouldn't say we're a melodic metal band but even though we have some songs that are heavily melodic but Mm. somehow in there we started getting labeled as groove metal and when i first heard that i wasn't mad at it you know it's like i i'm just if we had to get labeled something um, I'm happy that it was groove metal because for some reason that just sounds appealing to me. Yeah, yeah. I I, I suppose this is a good name as any. Um, back to the album. Which track would you pick? Say you had to pick one track out off of that album. Which hmm. track would you pick? You know, um, I'm gonna have to go with two. I would say Bloodbath and Nothing Lasts Forever. Mm-hmm. Or um, you know, completely different songs actually completely different tunings but uh i find myself enjoying those two the most when you know especially after sitting on it for four years you know the album's pretty old to me at this point yeah yeah okay uh that gets your blood going i suppose but i suppose what's really the core to any band is going out and touring it is and you know, what have you got in mind for that? Is there anything planned? I think yeah, we're okay at the moment. Nothing in Europe, unfortunately, at the moment. We are planning another run with Cradle in the States. 
Right. And in October, hopefully going into November. And I have heard talk of doing another run with Cradle in the States early next year. And I've heard talk of Australia, Japan. And if I mean, we haven't been over to Europe in 2000 since 2018, I think it's been a very long time. Oh, that's and shocking. We're overdue because I don't think we've been there basically every year since 2004. Right. I think. Might have missed a year here or there, but. Mm. I miss touring Europe. I I do enjoy it a little bit more than touring the States these days. I have seemed to um, grown to have a little bit more appreciation for like the architecture and the, and the history and just realizing that there's a little bit more just eye candy over there as opposed to the United States where everything virtually looks the same. Yeah. And uh, I just like being in foreign countries, you know? I'm in the United States all the time. I live here, so I I really enjoy being in Japan, Australia. Um, you know, the few times I've gotten to go to South America, the one time we got to go to South Africa, that was really cool. Yeah. You know, all these places, I like going places I've never been. It's fun for me, even if they're a little on the sketchy side. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Where's your favorite um, audience outside of the States? Russia. And really? Russia and Ukraine, which is a little bit tricky at the moment. Uh, impossible now. I don't think, unfortunately, with the way things are going, I don't think we'll ever be able to go to Russia again. And I, I would suppose, you know, Ukraine might be a possibility, but we've played each country twice, mm. and um, just insane crowds. I mean, it's. It's just night and day compared to the. I mean, we get some pretty rowdy crowds everywhere. Yeah. But uh, the Russians and the Ukrainians, they step it up a notch. It's a very <laughs> impressive thing for me to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can imagine with a couple of um, bottles of vodka and things can get a little bit wild on a Russian crowd. But yeah. Uh, may, maybe things will turn around again in a few years. Hope, hopefully, fingers crossed. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Only time will tell. Yes. Um, for you, yourself, I mean, you've mentioned a few bands you're going to see now this month. I mean, where, what what gives you inspiration for your own music at the moment? Who, who I, are your guitar heroes? Well, my ultimate guitar hero is Jerry Cantrell. I, I really like his style because he has this way of phrasing his riffs and, you know, rhythms and solos where they kind of sing to you. I've never, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a little bit of guitar shredding here and there, but I've kind of grown away from that and, you know, learned to appreciate guys like Jerry Contrell and like Bjorn from In Flames, you know, when they mm. solo, it's not, they can shred. You know, and but you know, maybe not like animals as leaders type of thing, but um, they can play fast, very impressively, but they can also just slow it down and just let the guitar sing to you. Yeah. And I've just grown to enjoy that type of playing more. But then there's people like Dime that kind of had a, the ability to do both at the same time, and yeah. he's definitely another one of my favorites. One of a kind. But I'm heavily, you know, it's kind of hard to hear, but there's, if you listen closely, you know, some of the, the layering that we do in Double Driver, I think directly comes from, you know, like Sisters of Mercy being an influence mm. to me and kind of the, the 90s goth and industrial scene. And um, <clears throat> in the beginning days of this band, I was heavily influenced by Scandinavian uh, melodic death metal, like In Flames, Opeth, At the Gates. Yeah. Um, I know they're not Scandinavian, but like uh, Carcass's artwork, I think, is the best death metal album of all time. Okay. And, uh, but over the years, I've kind of, I, I've noticed my writing style. I'm trying to get away from that now. And I, uh, I'm more of a fan of dissonance. And rather than writing these, pretty melodic riffs i've like i've completely done a 180 i think in a lot of ways not all the time but um i have found this way of writing just using a lot of ugly sounding stuff 
and you know more bends within the rhythms and um just um you know i've gotten uh, started to get into like doom and sludge metal a lot more than i was and it's kind of a recent thing for me and i just honestly i don't listen to a whole lot of melodic death metal anymore like I, i go through my phases but it's not really in my regular rotation anymore I think, I think every, everybody's tastes change over the years. And when you get to my age, you find that you just listen to everything. Yeah. Just I've, different days. Different bluegrass shoes. is one of my, is kind of my new obsession right now. Okay. I, uh, just one day I got the urge to look for, uh, I typed in dark bluegrass into Spotify and I look for a playlist, you know, because okay. I wanted like the darker side of that genre. And I, I wish I knew what triggered me to want to listen to that. I don't remember. It might have been Amigo the Devil. Um, uh, there I have listened to this band. I went on. I they kind of bluegrass influence called Sixteen Horsepower from back in the day. I've been listening to them since I was in high school. But now I'm just like listening to everything. Uh, the Dead South is my all time favorite. Um, and a couple of guys in that band are actually metalheads. Okay. Uh, Good Night Texas. There's a band called Oh Death that I really like and uh, Trampled by Turtles. Like I just have really gotten into the genre and I kind of su- surprised myself that I've gone that direction. I never in a million years thought I would be this much into uh, that type of music. Do you think that might affect your writing now in the next Devil Driver album? I have written a couple songs. I'm 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 almost completely done with one song, and then I've got two others in the making. And at this point, I would have to say no. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in there that's reminiscent of bluegrass or country or Americana, any of that stuff. At least not yet. Okay, I'm I'm glad to hear that. In a way, but intrigued in another way <laughs> Dude, when we released our outlaws record i could definitely tell that we had a much better response out of that record in the states than we did anywhere else in the world just like I europeans australia uh, people in australia obviously japan no but there's a lot of people in the in the states that dug that and i would have to admit that i I don't think I heard a whole... I definitely heard some negative, but hey, country's not for everybody. <laughs> uh, Southern Boogie and uh, rock and blues and whatever is quite big in the UK at the moment, especially is it? in the older generation like myself. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I can listen to it. It'd be great. I've got some good bands doing the rounds, but uh, yeah, Leonard's going to... Yeah, just keep it at that. <laughs> 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 okay i'm not gonna hold you up too much longer it's been great speaking to you mike um the new album dealing with demons volume two was out on the 12th of may on napalm records yes i've got that right um hopefully we shall see you in the uk before too long hopefully and, we'll uh, be there in 2024 excellent thank you thank you for your time mike it's been You're a welcome. pleasure have a good night <laughs>